Hello friends, I am Parinita. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe the channel and press the bell icon to receive regular notifications regarding computer science tutorials, important educational information and technical job updates. Hello guys, welcome back to the series of Python programming. In our previous videos, we have already seen about the conditional statements in Python, like the if statement, we have seen the variations of if, like if else, if, nested if, elif, right. We have also seen um, what are loops, how to deal with loops. We have seen while loop in detail in our previous video. Fine. Now in this video, we are going to see another type of loop that is for loop. Now basically what is for loop? F-O-R, for loop. We are talking about for loop, right? So in this video, we are going to see in detail that what are for loops, how we can use for loop. Uh, we will see with the help of different examples and different cases of for loop like nested for loop, then how the iterations of for loop works with tuple, with range, with list. Fine, we will see all the variations so that you will get a clear idea all about for loop by the end of this video. Fine. Now, before starting, let me tell you if you are new here, if you are new to the series, you are watching this video for the first time, then you can find the description, you can find the link in the description. Um, we are having the ongoing series of playlists we have already learned very important concepts of Python already. So you can visit that link and you can uh, visit or watch the previous video so that you will get a clear idea regarding all the basic topics of Python. Fine? Okay. So now let's start today's topic that is for loop. Now the first question that comes to our mind is what is for loop? So this for loop is nothing but it is also a kind of loop. So what I told you in the previous video, what is loop? So loop is nothing but Basically, a uh, loop is a, like, we can say that loop allows us to execute multiple lines or a large num a number of lines in short line of code. That means, if I want four line of code to be executed five times, that means actually there are 20 line of code. But what I can do with the help of loop, that I can write those four lines inside any loop and I can iterate that loop for the five times so that those four lines will be executed five times. Instead of writing the 20 lines of code, I can do the same thing with 4 lines of code. Got it? So, this is basically the use of loops. Now, what is for loop? A for loop is used for, uh, you can say, iterating over a sequence. The sequence can be either list or tuple or dictionary or the character of the strings, etc. So, in this way, we can iterate the for loop on any such sequence of characters or sequence of values. So how? Let's see with the help of example. So you just need to remember that with the help of for loop, we can execute a set of statements once for each item, either in list or tuple or set, etc. Or we can directly iterate it on some specific range of values also. So let's see directly with the help of examples that how the for loop is working so that we will get a better idea. For example, let's say we are having a list for a uh, color. Okay, so color is equal to how we can define the list. We have already seen that thing. Whenever we want to define the list, we have to write them inside this square bracket. Inside the square bracket, I have to write the members of the list. So, for example, let's say we are having blue, red, white. Fine. So, what I have done here, I have simply taken the list color, the variable name is color, that is our list and inside list I have taken three values. Now, for example, I simply want to print the values of this list. So, what I can do, I can iterate a for loop for, now how, uh, what is the syntax of for loop? First of all, I have to write the keyword for, then space, then I have to take any one dummy variable. You can write i, j, k, x, whatever. So, i, fine, this is any variable. So, for i, in, you have to write in. Uh, okay, what is in? We have seen in operators also. I have told you about membership operator, if you remember. So, we were having in and not in. So, they were membership operators. Membership operators means what? If I write for i in color. So what do the uh, what do I mean by this for i in color? That means what 
it is a membership operator it will check that if this i any variable i is present in this color list or not so it will actually check if it is still a member of this list or not so this is the syntax that for space i i is any variable in and then our list name name of the list and then you have to make a colon enter now i have to write the statement whatever i want to do so for i in color means as long as my i or my any variable will get the value from this list color what i want to do i simply want to print that color so print this variable i simple now let's run it see you can see the output that we are getting all the values of the list color got it so you just need to remember this syntax and how it is working so what is the syntax simply for i in then our list name and then inside this see again this indentation is important i i am telling you in all the videos that indentation is very very important in case of python fine so for i in color then we are having this indentation space and then we are simply printing this variable i so what it will contain now it will contain all the members of this color list because i have mentioned color here fine so it will print all the members of the color list and this for loop will be executed or this iteration will go on how many number of times the number of times the values are present in the list simple so here we are having three values so this for loop will be iterated for three times got it so this is how for loop actually works so uh, here we have iterated it on a list similarly you can work with tuple also you can work with set also now uh, we can work with simple string also that means let me show you here for example color is a variable and okay let's say i am simply for i in i can simply write any see color is written here if i enclose this color by quotes so what will happen now when i enclose this color or any word with quotes that means what now this becomes my string so if i want to iterate the for loop on any string what output i will get it will simply give me the characters of the strings for example let's run it see see the output what it is giving c o l o r whatever you will for example if i am changing it just for your understanding see it will simply return me all the characters so what you noticed here that when we were iterating the for loop on any list what it was returning it was returning me all the values of the list right and now when i am iterating this i loop on any string so what it is returning it is simply returning me all the characters of the string so in this way this for loop can be iterated on any of these data types you can understand them fine so that you can use this for loop as per your requirement whatever requirement you are having in your code you can use them accordingly so this is how we can use for loop for getting any uh, for getting the specific characters from any string this is the syntax how we can use it now well the thing that i told you in case of while loop that is how to use break how to use continue uh, they will remain as it is in this case of uh, for loop also there we have already uh, learnt about break uh, continue pass we have learnt about these three keywords if you want to know about them we have already discussed in detail in that video of while loop i would suggest you to go and check out there so the use of while uh, so the use of break keyword continue keyword and pass keyword will be will uh, act exactly same in this for loop also as it was working in the while loop uh, while loop fine the working of those keywords will be exactly same so i am not repeating them again in this video okay so uh, so in short in the for loop also if you want to break the loop you can use break keyword if you want to break any particular iteration you can use the continue keyword and if you simply want to ignore any um, iteration you can use the pass keyword fine we have already seen them in detail then what are the other variation yes range you can uh, rotate your for loop as per an uh, inside any specific range also for example if you want your for loop to be iterated five times 
So simply what you can do, you can fix the range here. How you can fix the range? See, for i in, then you can fix the range. For example, if I want to rotate it or uh, execute it 5 times, so what I can do, I can write 5 here. And if I am writing print i, what it will do, see, uh, understand this range 5, what it is doing? It will give the range, by default, the range always starts from 0. 0 and it uh, continues up to this number, whatever number we have given here, this minus 1. That means I have written here range of 5. So, it will give me from 0 to 4, that is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is how range works. So, if I want our for loop to be executed n number of times, so I can give the number n here and it will simply start from 0 and it will execute up to that number. So, this is how also we can uh, work with our for loop. So, let's run it. See, as I told you, when if I want my for loop to be executed 5 times, I can execute this for loop in this way that for i in range of 5 if i write here range of 8 or some anything like that it will give me 0 to 7 fine so in short it is giving us 0 to n minus 1 so you can use it as per your requirement so yes so this is how uh, this is actually one type of range that we can write apart from that see this is what we have passed we have passed the stopping symbol stopping parameter that this is the number before which i want to stop my loop if i want i can also see if i am uh, as it was see if i am only passing the stopping parameter the starting parameter by default it is taking as zero whenever i am passing only stopping parameter by default it is starting from zero but if i want uh, in, in, instead of starting from 0, if I want it to start from any other number, I can do that also. So, instead of passing only the stopping parameter, we can pass both start as well as stop. So, what I can do, let's say I am passing 3 here. And you have to uh, pass them separated by commas, fine. So, I am passing two parameters in my range function now. That is 3, 8. So, what will happen is, um, our for loop will start from 3. And it will go up to 8 minus 1. So, let's see by running it. See, it is starting from 3 and it is going up to 8 minus 1. That is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, if there is any such application where you don't want to start from 0, you can give your own starting number here and then your loop will be starting from that given number as per your requirement. Fine. Okay. There is one more variation also. See. Either you can only pass the stopping parameter, either you can pass the start and stop both the parameters or you can pass the third parameter that is um, uh, that is like step that see if you are only passing two parameters, if you are not passing step, what happens that automatically your series is incrementing by 1 that 3 after 3, 3 plus 1 that is 4, after 4, 4 plus 1, 5. So by default your numbers in the sequence are incrementing by 1. But if you want the numbers of your sequence to be incremented by something else other than 1, if you want them to be in the difference of 3, in the difference of 5, you can do that. So, for example, if I pass 2 here, see what happens. They will be incremented by 2. So, see, 3 is my starting symbol. So, first of all, 3 is there. Then what I have passed the step is 2. So, 3, then plus 2. So, 5 is there. After 5 plus 2, 7 is there. Now, my stopping symbol, stopping parameter is 8. So, it will not exceed 8. If I write here some big number to just show you, for example, I am giving here 12. So, you can see that we will get up to 11. See, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. So, in short, now the difference between the consecutive numbers are 2. So, like this also, you can use your for loop with different, different parameters of range. So that, like, it depends on your requirement. Whatever your requirement of the code is, you can use it accordingly. I am just showing you the possibilities, how you can use it differently in different cases. Fine. So, what else we are having? Mm, yes. Uh, we can use else with for. Now, how else keyword works with for is, for example, see. Uh, okay, let's do with this only. Whenever my i is in the range of this 3, 12, 2, 
I am printing I. And if it is not there, what I can do? I can write in else. That else, what I want to print? Let's print that sequence is over. So, what happen? Uh, what will happen whenever you write the else block here? See, whenever this condition is true, that I in range of this, whenever up to the time when I will be in this range, whenever uh, this condition is true, this print I will be executed. Now, as soon as this for loop iteration is completed, the condition is false now. So, at the end, it will come to the else part and this will be executed. That means what? Print time will be executed every time. So, up to 12, this is our stopping parameter. So, unless this 12th number comes, this loop will go on. And once the condition is false and this loop is terminated, at the end it will come to this else part and this part will be executed. Let's see with the help of example C. All the numbers are already printed. Now once this for loop is over, it will simply come to this else and sequence is over. This sequence is over, this line is printed. So if any such condition is there that you want something to happen once the for loop iterations are over. So, if you want something to happen after the for loop iterations, so you can write that particular piece of code inside the else portion of your code. Fine. So, this is how we can use else. Now, the last thing that I wanted to show you is how to use nested loop, nested for loop. What do we mean by nested for loop? One for loop inside another for loop is known as nested for loop. Simple as that. So, for example, let's say we are having two lists. Fine. So, for example, we are having, um, let's say color, one list is color, so color equal to, how we can define the list with the help of big brackets or square brackets, I am giving the colors that is red, black and let's say white, these are the three colors I have given and let's say we are having another list for fruits that is having Apple, banana, and uh, cherry. Fine. So these are the two lists that we are having. Now what we want to do is we want to take nested uh, nested for loop. Nested for loop means one for loop inside another for loop. So for example, the first for loop that we are having that is for i is any variable that I can take and I want it to be in the list of color. And then enter. Now again I will take one for loop. This for loop means this is this for loop we can say that this is nested for loop. That this for loop is inside any other for loop. So we can say that this is nested for loop. Now for example this for loop is for the variable to be inside the list color. And I want in this in the next for loop I want a variable to be in the list of fruits. Fine. Now, simply I want to print, let's say i, j. Fine. Let's see the output. See, this is the output that we are getting. Okay, uh, let me remove one so that you can, I can explain well in this, in this space. Yes, see. So, this is the code and this is the output I am getting. So, what? the code here is doing there are two lists one for the color in which i am having three values and one for fruits in which i am having two values now what i am doing in the first for loop i am iterating it for i in color and the second for loop i am iterating it for j in fruits now what i am doing i am simply printing i comma j that means what first of all the value of i will be the first value of color list that means in the first iteration the value of i will be red now, when it will come here, the value of fruits will be one by one apple and banana. So, first of all, red will be combined with apple in this print ij. First of all, red will be combined with apple. Then red will be combined with banana. That means what? See actually how it will work. First of all, this for loop will be executed once. Then it will come here. Now, this for loop will be executed for all the number of fruits. Again, after this print, again it will go here and then it will be iterated for the next value of color. So, for the first value of red, we will get its combination with both. 
so red apple and red banana now again it will come here and we will get the value black now again it will come in the fruits and it will be iterated for both the values of fruits that is black apple black banana then after this is completed then again it will come here and we will get the third value that is white and then this white will be again combined here with both the values that is white apple and white banana fine so this is how nested for loops work nested loop means what for every iteration of the upper value or for every iteration of the inner of the outer for loop for every one iteration of the outer for loop this inner for loop will be executed for all the number of times as per this condition means this this will be checked once that is one value is got and after this one value is received this will be iterated for all the values of fruits after that again we are getting the second value of color and with the second value of color this will be executed for all the values of fruits fine so this is how the looping of for loop or the nesting of for loop occurs and this is how they are working you can uh, see with the help of this example with the help of this output and you can again play with it you can change the values number of values types of values in the list and you can go on checking the difference in the output and then you will get a better idea fine so in this video we try to understand all about for loop how it is working what are the different outputs what are the different cases how differently we can use the for loops we have tried to understand uh, understand all those things i hope you have understood in case you have any doubt you can always ask in the comment section so that's all for today for the for loop now see you tomorrow at the same time in the same place and with a different topic new topic thank you so much